This, 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 this is a homage beat. And if I actually pay them, then there's the problem? There's, it's an interesting point. Um, I think an issue is that sometimes we overlook the fact that just looking at these different things and how these people, and people can be exploited in this and using sex in this way, we overlook the fact that a lot of us have grown up just through what we have seen as young men, especially just talking because we're both young men. So we grew up in like a lot of rape culture. Mm -hmm. Like it's a lot of things that have been, that we've been taught growing up or seen like through media mm -hmm. or music that we hear or even just conversations that are normal walking through high school or on college campuses that it's like we grew up in a rape culture that like talking about women or seeing people in this way as sexualized beings is okay. Mm -hmm. And it's, and it does become like this thing where it's like, okay, I can do this. I can like, it's cool. Like you slap me, give me high fives and you tell me like I'm, I'm the man because I got multiple, like it would be in college. Like when I was in college, it was like the cool, it, it was look, it was a double standard that you would see girls doing things or leaving out of dorms. And they would be looking at a certain way, but the guy that's doing stuff with every girl on campus, yeah. everybody like, yo, he the man. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, and I'm not trying to make that statement like I'm like this person that was, we'll probably get to something like that. I'm not this mm -hmm. perfect person that was doing things in the proper way the whole time, but it's it's just a double standard yeah. that um, it's seeing that it's just a double standard we've created for this. Mm -hmm. This thing where like, if you, and then you're going to say that it's not okay to, that is, it's okay to do all these things with people, but it's not okay to pay for it. Yeah. It just, it does seem like it's more appropriate to like, because I'm making a choice. Mm -hmm. It's a legal, it's a, it can be a legal transaction. Mm -hmm. It's something that both people consent to mm -hmm. versus like all these different things happening and then all things happening negative, like yeah. they're not proper. So, I mean, I can definitely see where it's going. And, and like I said, that was that was one reason where we just see sex as like a right. So if it's a right, then you can pretty much do it with whoever you want. And then I said another common argument um, for homosexuality that parallels prostitution is the plea that one is born that way. I say though may uh, though many tend to refute this and believe one's sexual orientation is a choice, and I didn't necessarily want to get into all of that. But like I said, I'll grant that person that point and say that one is born that way. But I say that doesn't absolve one from any kind of culpability. I say nympho uh, nymphomania is a mental disorder marked by um, compulsive sexual desires. Now, my intent is not to compare a mental disorder with homosexuality, but my point is simply to point out that there are those who are born with heightened sexual desires. Being born this way is not an excuse for inappropriate sexual behavior like yeah. rape, pedophilia, bestiality. I know if you no, 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 girl. Um, and so it's like when you when you see people who commit these crimes, like again, rape, pedophilia, and bestiality. It's like their argument is, "Well, I was born this way. Like this, these are just simply my desires." But we would criminalize those people. So in essence, we can say that even though someone is born a certain way, that doesn't absolve them of any kind of culpability. And like I said, I wanted to be very careful because these are extreme cases. Um, of sexual obsession, but the point is every single person is born with a tendency to act on their sexual desires Just because my sexual propensity isn't the same as someone else. I still have that sexual propensity to act like I said We're married men. We ain't blind that there's other women out there. Yeah. You know, we've got to put our desires in check Yeah, you know, right. we can't just act right. like oh, you know, there's nothing wrong with this No, we've got to what submit our ourselves um, to to our wives and, and honor them and I say this, um, our, many people's sexual desires come in the form of what, having casual sex, um, viewing pornography, going to strip clubs, yeah. and paying for prostitutes. I say each of these behaviors are controversial, except, uh, excuse me, each of these behaviors are controversial, but are legal, yeah. except the latter. And, I, and this is my question to you. Why do you think these acts are accept acceptable, casual sex, um, viewing pornography and going to strip clubs all of those are like acceptable by the masses at large but except praying for a prostitute why do we look stub our nose up at that when it's like 
All them other things, is, and this is what, because you were talking about rape culture, and I don't know if you watched The Breakfast Club or not, but Charlemagne was just talking about how we grew up in rape culture. And I think um, they had like Pastor Carl Lentz on, and he was like, that's cool and everything, but it's like rape culture is even seen in pornography. Yeah. It's like we don't even stop and think about that, but we cool. He would co-sign looking at pornography. He would yeah. have no problem with looking at pornography, but no, that's, that's rape culture. Still, what, viewing women as just objects yeah. to fulfill our sexual desire. And it's like yeah. strip clubs, right? Casual sex. Yeah. It's just what? One conquest to the next. Yeah. And it's like you're not viewing women in its proper context. So all those things are legal and acceptable, but then we come to prostitution. We're like, oh, no, we're too good for that. Like, yeah, <laughs> how like, do you think those other ones are acceptable without prostitution? I mean, just reading it, I mean, it makes me question, like, is strip clubs and pornography, is that not prostitution in itself? So it's kind of like, <laughs> I'm just sitting there like, and I mean, I've thought about it before because when I've struggled with pornography before, mm -hmm. I would be like, well, I'll watch the free stuff, but I'm not going to pay for it. <laughs> like, it's like, like it makes me better yeah, off. Yeah. Like, or, I mean, I might admit, There's I've been some sort of righteousness. Yeah, like some sort of righteousness. And being going to a strip club before when mm -hmm. I was younger, um, and seeing it, like, looking back on that, I'm like, yo, how was this not? And reading things and learning more and growing and maturing in Christ, I'm like, and, I, and just reading this, like, the couple times I've read through your chapter, it's like, bro, how is that stuff not prostitution? <laughs> and I'm, like, thinking about it, and I'm, I, and it's hypocritical yeah. to not legalize it, but then say, like, hey, we can hit the strip club, like, and it's like, you know, and if you're making a money thing where it's like, well, they're earning money from, I'm like, yo, prostitution, like, that's probably, like, they make money. Yeah. Like, just on the... Yeah. Under on the underground, like they probably make millions and billions of dollars mm -hmm. with sex trafficking, prostitution. So I just don't it's just a weird it's just a it's a slippery slope, man. Yeah. To say that like, well, yeah, you can make the pornog the pornography, the industry of that is like it makes money. It's people's livelihood. Keep yeah. it going. Strip clubs, people's livelihood. Prostitution, that's somebody's livelihood. And some people can't even help the fact that they got into it because they were forced into it mm -hmm. when they were youths yeah. and they grew up and that's all they knew because mm -hmm. nobody ever took time to work with them to get therapy. The people that people overlook them yeah. on the side of the street mm -hmm. because, oh, they're nasty, they're dirty, yeah. and nobody went to get them help. Mm -hmm. Nobody stepped out and prayed for them. Nobody worked with them. So it's a slippery slope for yeah. us to sit here and be like, yeah, it's cool, like the strip club and stuff and laugh at it and make it a joke but then not look at prostitution like in the same way so it's just yeah. a slippery slope bro. yeah and like i yeah. said it, it just make you think and that's the whole point of the chapter was like i don't know if you'll like a side uh, uh not that i'm trying to win someone to to my point of view but just to get you to think about it because like i said if you don't come from a biblical world view you have to acknowledge the the gross hypocrisy where you'll see, you know, like, and, and like I said, pornography is, is just huge, bro. It's a billion, it literally is a billion dollar industry. And you can argue that at a strip club, someone's not necessarily paying for the physical act of, of sex, but pornography, it is. Like, how is that any different than prostitution? Like, yeah. I, I, I don't understand how that yeah. can be legal and justifiable, but yet someone who's prostituting isn't. It's like either make all of it illegal or make all of it legal. How are you going to pick and choose sure. what is and isn't when they're pretty much all essentially um, the same thing? I say the problem occurs when we view sex as a right and not a gift designed for a husband and a wife to be intimate and procreate. If sex is a right, we exercise this right with whoever we see fit. However, if sex is a gift, we cherish and honor it. If sex is our right to do with um, whomever and however we, uh, if sex is our right, we do it with whomever and however we want. However, sex viewed this way leads to chaos and dysfunction. And I say this without even establishing man-made rules, sex naturally creates rules that we must follow or there'll be consequences. What are some consequences of having sex outside of marriage? Because most people, they don't even, they don't, to, to make, give them that concept that, Bro, you shouldn't have sex to you married. Again, people look at you like you're a freaking lunatic to say yeah, that. Yeah. It's like, what's wrong with you? And yeah. it's like, we act like there aren't any consequences. So what are some of the consequences of yeah. what's saying, sex is my right. It's not a gift from God. I'm going to do with it 
however I want. And like I said, sex just mm-hmm. naturally gives you these consequences, whether you believe in God or not. What are some of these consequences? Man, bro, there's multiple consequences. And um, and it's definitely one that I want you to expound on. I'm okay. not even going to get into it. I'm going to ask you, like, as I continue, like, yeah. talk through it. Like, definitely, I mean, STDs. Yep. Pregnancy outside of marriage. Mm-hmm. Broken families. Yep. Um, and just looking at it, being someone that didn't make the choice to wait mm-hmm. until marriage to have sex, it's just emotionally, it's taxing, and yep. you become tied to a person. Mm-hmm. Um, you become tied to a person that you never really meant to be tied to. Yeah, and it's just I like I like to listen. Like I, Bizzle is one of my favorite like guys. Okay, yeah, yeah. I like Bizzle. I remember a line he like I, I don't want to like butcher the, butcher his bar, <laughs> but. He said something like he wanted to. T- he was talking in the form of like lust and adultery or whatever. Mm-hmm. He was talking, and he said something like he got to turn away before his mind, because his mind can turn to TiVo. Mm-hmm. And he was just saying like you can like see these things with these women, and it's always in your yeah. brain. So I can like honestly, and it's bad, and I got to pray over it. But it's like when you have sex outside of marriage, like you become emotionally tied mm-hmm. to that person without wanting to, and you still can have thoughts about mm-hmm. them. Even if you had a relationship with them 10 Mm -hmm. years ago or it's been years or you don't even talk to this person, those interactions are still connected to you and part of you because you stepped outside of that gift Mm -hmm. that God's given you. Like you stepped outside of it and you did not have a pure relationship. So there are are, are long-term consequences to sex outside of marriage because, and people take those and if you don't deal with those consequences and deal with those relationships, like it can affect you into marriage, and mm-hmm. you become you start to cope with it. Yeah, yeah. And I've dealt with that before. Um, but the point that you made that it was a loss of intimacy, mm-hmm. and I really thought that was interesting that you brought it up. And I never looked at it that way until I read what you wrote. Can you talk about that yeah, a little yeah, bit absolutely, more? Absolutely, absolutely. Because yeah. I think I say it's an overlooked consequence. The loss of intimacy. We believe the lie that sex is purely physical. And if it's just simply physical, we can just do it, whatever, and not have any second thought. And that's a lot. We always think, you know, sex is something, you know, um, especially for men, that there's no emotional connection. But that's a lie. You know, if sex didn't feel good, we wouldn't do it. So it's not yeah, just purely yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, physical. Yeah. That there's a, an emotional connection that's tied to it. And I would even say a spiritual um, connection that's tied to it. Like you were saying, it's like you're giving yourself over to this person who you, you don't even know. But, like, people people die over that what like we we act like oh it's just i just had sex with them but if someone had sex with a girl that you was with like you would feel some type of way about it yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. like it's not just simply a, a purely physical act there's some emotion there's some spiritual connection yeah. that's that's um attached to it and i say this recklessness leads to the sex crave society we see um we live in today sex is no longer a gift to be cherished and honored but a way to sell a product Mm-hmm. I say, however, um, viewing um, sex this way, the primary victims are women. In order to sell a market or product, women are exploited for their physique. Mm-hmm. You know, for some reason, if there's a beautiful, voluptuous woman shown, it helps sell a video game or, yeah. or, or um, food. And I was thinking, I don't know if you remember this commercial. It was a couple years ago. Um, it was World of Warcraft. <laughs> and I don't know if you know who this person is, okay. but it was Kate Upton. Yeah. And yeah, so... Um, I don't remember nothing about the commercial. I just, <laughs> I just remember her. Huh? And she had like this yeah, white, yeah, like, yeah, toga yeah, or whatever. Bro, bro. Yeah. And it's like, what does she have to do with World of Warcraft? Nothing. But it's like, they just prop it there for you. And again, yeah. it just shows you the, the how misogynistic because we act like women don't play World of Warcraft. But it's yeah. what geared towards men. Yeah. And so we're like, oh, let me get that game because bro. Kate Upton is on it. Like, what the heck? Bro, that's real because...